Hi, my name is Noma and I'm recording from Johannesburg, South Africa. This is my latest podcast episode. So thank you so much for joining me. It's been a while and I'm so excited to be recording again. So there's quite a lot to talk about today. So for the first time since I started podcasting, I decided to write down everything that I'll be talking about. So I hope for, I won't forget anything today. Um, so the first thing that I want to talk about are the changes that have taken place in my business since the last time I did the recording. So first of all, um, my sister Leslie, who's been doing all my modeling, has relocated to the United States. She's now in Arizona, she's in Phoenix. So that's a major change that has taken place because since I started doing this, uh, since I started designing, she's been doing most of my modeling. I've had other models in between before because initially I was taking my own photos and then I got a, professional photographer but uh, even when I was working with a professional photographer I realized that uh, it's easier to have someone doing the modeling because most people are not used to um, shooting knitwear for example so I have to highlight the stuff that he has to shoot and to focus on on the shoots so in that way if I'm also behind the camera it means uh, we'll take less time and the cost is going to be slightly less so this time around i'll be modeling my own stuff so it's going to take a little bit more a little more time but i think since we've been doing this for a very long time it's not going to really impact much because he's now used to what i'll be looking for and sometimes he reminds me when i've forgotten to shoot certain angles or certain elements in a design so i think we're going to be fine on that one but uh that's a major change that has taken place in my business and the other one is um, my tech editor has resigned so she resigned at the end of august so that's also been a major change because we've worked together on so many of my designs i think she has um she tech edited about 70 or more designs that i did so it's been a very long relationship and now i'll be working with someone different and I'm looking forward to it, of course, to the changes and everything, because that also means I have to really think through the processes and the business and change some certain elements, maybe that I'd gotten lazy with because I was working with familiar people. So um, I'm looking forward to the changes that are going to be taking place. But that has also meant that for the past few months, I've been a little off balance because I, I was kind of moved from my comfort zone in the business space. So I'm making a lot of changes and doing a lot of things differently now. So that's the first thing that I wanted to talk about that has been happening. And then the next thing um, that I want to talk about is my stash. So um, for those of you that follow me on Instagram, you'll notice that last month I sold uh, my stash most of it anyway so um generally ever since i started knitting i've never really been one to keep a large stash i only buy yarn for the projects that i need because i find that um less overwhelming when i have to look at the amount of yarn that i've got on my shelves so um since lockdown um in 2020 remember when the COVID situation began we went on level five of the lockdown and here in South Africa, that meant that even Korea companies were not working. So I couldn't get any deliveries. And I kind of freaked out a bit at the time thinking, what if this takes too long and I, I ran out of yarn? So when we went to level four and Korea companies could now work, I bought a lot of yarn. And at the time I was into very bright and colorful yarns. So those of you that, that may know, in 2019, I was pregnant, expecting my second daughter, and I was very sick. So whenever I get pregnant, I suffer from hyperemesis, gravidum, I think that's the name of it, HG. So I, I get so sick to an extent that I can barely function or leave the house or do anything. So in 2019, I couldn't leave the house. For Since June, I was stuck at home. I would only leave the house when I was going for doctor's appointments. So... Um, when my daughter was born in March 2020, I was looking forward to going out and doing stuff. And then I think when she was two days old, that's when the lockdown was announced. So we couldn't leave, we couldn't go anywhere. So I was stuck in the house for a couple of months again. So during that time, all I wanted was some color, some brightness, something to cheer me up. So 
uh, so when we were able to shop and buy yarn, I bought colorful, bright yarns, like as bright as I could possibly get. Some hot pinks, purples, and bright blues. Colors that I don't generally use when I'm uh, designing or knitting my stuff. So um, when the pandemic got better and we could go out and move around, I kind of wanted to go back to my more neutral colors that I wear like since forever but I had all this yarn and I kept trying to think of designs that I could do with them and for some I already had some ideas but I didn't want to do them anymore because I knew that I wouldn't really enjoy wearing those items that much so um, the stash was quite a huge stress for a while so this sometime this winter I decided to sell off my stash and you know only get the yarns that I wanted to work with at the time so I sold off everything so I the yarn used to be on those shelves behind me so the shelves are very deep if you look at the one that's right here by the corner I could literally put in over 200 balls of yarn like the ones that I I had African expression yarns I could fit in about two so I had quite a lot because all the shelves were full and some of them had skeins the one at the bottom they had all the skeins of yarn that I was working with and the top shelves had the balls so it was a lot of yarn and I, I sold it off and I got a lot of support from um, South African knitters uh, so it was quite a relief to be able to start on a clean slate I've, I'm only left with yarns for about um, six big projects and of course I've got some um, individual skeins here and there but I can work six or seven projects with the yarns that I've got and some of them were sponsored so well I, I, I still have to work with them so it's quite um, a relief to have less yarn and to be able to focus on what I'm going to be working on next so I'll be buying yarn for I think only two projects that I'll be launching at the beginning of uh, 2023 but other than that I've got enough yarn for the next couple of months and I've got very little uh, yarn if you can see it there on my right shoulder there's my remaining yarn and it looks a bit bulky because I'll be working on two coats so um, that's going to be the bulk of yarn once that one that those two coats are done the yarn is going to shrink even more so I'm looking for baskets to just put it in the baskets. So I'll see if I get something that I like. So I'm really happy about that and I'm excited about the future projects that I'll be working on. I'll share some of the stuff that I'll be working on towards the end of the video. So now the next thing that I wanted to talk about, uh, well, I'll talk about this briefly because there isn't much to share. Uh, my piano lessons. On the last podcast, I mentioned that I had started taking piano lessons in November last year, I kind of wanted to do something that was different from the uh, fiber arts or from, I didn't want to do sewing or anything. I wanted something that would literally take my mind off anything that's related to fiber or fabrics or materials, just something totally different. So I, decide, I decided to do piano lessons. So it's something that I've always wanted to do since I was a child, but I never got the chance. And I'm, I was fortunate enough to find a great online platform is called Piano with Johnny and um, it's really nice there are a number of teachers there we get live sessions we get to do some of the sessions on Zoom so there's a lot of interaction and there are thousands of lessons on the on the platform and I get to work at my own pace because it was going to be very difficult for me to take lessons where I have to actually physically go to the class um, I've got a two-year-old and a nine-year-old uh, so between school runs and taking care of my younger daughter at home, there's a lot that I have to do in between. So the idea of going for lessons somewhere, coming back, you know, the traveling time and everything is going to take up so much of my time in the day. But at least now that I'm doing the lessons online, it makes things so much easier. So I'm almost done with the basics because I was a complete beginner when I started. So I've done most of the courses and I've had a lot of improvement. And one of the interesting things that I noticed, um, for those that play the piano and do some of the things they are going to understand, 
Um, I was worried about learning uh, hand coordination and working with my hands at different rhythms, but I noticed that it wasn't that difficult to get to it. And I think it's because of the knitting and working with my hands every single day. So it's very easy to, okay, not very easy, that's not true. So it's not been as difficult as I thought. And I noticed that um, if I'm looking at the sheet music, I'm still struggling with sight reading, of course. I've still got a long way to go. But because I'm used to reading charts, so it's easy for me to be able to see how the notes line up for the left hand and the right hand because I'm just used to seeing the bigger picture when I'm looking at a chart and to look at the little details when I'm actually working stitch by stitch. So um, my knitting is also contributing to my piano lessons in a way, and I found that um, certain things that a lot of beginners will struggle with are not as uh, complicated because of my knitting background. So um, I'm hoping to maybe share something one of those days when I'm uh, to record something and share it at the end of one of my podcasts. We'll see as time goes on. Um, so now uh, on to the knitting part. So I've got a bit to share with you today. So I'll start off by talking about what I'm wearing today. So I'm wearing the Quasi cardigan. So I launched this earlier this year. I think it was in August. So um, this is knit using um, Miss Lamotian's and it's the smoke fade. So it's four colors. I'll put a picture to show you how the whole garment looks like. So um, this is constructed kind of in a different way because the top is worked, um, the yoke is worked from the top down and then the flounces are worked from the bottom up and everything is joined with Kitchener stitch. So uh, I know there are some people who won't want to do Kitchener stitch, but um, I like the seamless finish that you can't even tell. Okay, if you look at it here, let me lift it up. You can't even tell that these pieces were knit in different directions. And the reason why I did that is because I don't like working uh, the regular uh, stitches from the bottom up. Somehow I just don't like doing it that way. Otherwise, I would have worked on it from the bottom up. And with the flounces, I had to work them from the bottom up and join them as I go. It was going to be kind of complicated to work it from the top, top down. So um, that's the crazy cut again. And the sleeves are three quarter and they're also faded. So um, with this cut, you don't necessarily have to use a fade set. You can do some color blocking. I think for someone who can work with neon colors and have each flounce in a bright neon color, I think it will look so cool. And um, you can even do two colors, have the yoke in one color, and then the first flounce in a different color, the second flounce in the same color as the yoke, and the bottom one in the same color as the first flounce. So you have the colors alternating like that. So there are a lot of ways that you can do this. You can even do it in a solid, in a single color. That will also work just fine. So I'm really loving this. And today it's a bit cold because it was raining earlier on. So um, it's quite a nice and warm uh, spring garment or even in the early fall you can put this on. So that's what I'm wearing today. And then the next thing I want to talk about are the items that I received that had been published by other uh, companies. So the first thing I want to talk about is the Lustrous Show. I launched this as an individual pattern last week. So this is the show. It's reversible. So the cables look slightly different on one side and the other. So this is how one side looks like and the other side. So this show is worked from the bottom up. So you start with the largest with all your stitches and you decrease on one side. So it's a very easy to knit and it is really, I think an advanced beginner can pull this off. And um, so it was, this pattern was in the book, Confident Knitting. So it's also on the cover, isn't it pretty? Yeah, so um, I launched this as an individual pattern. So if you're interested in the pattern, it's available on Ravelry and Craftsy. Oh, not Craftsy, Etsy, sorry. So um, the next item that I got from the mail is my Brooklyn Tweed design is the Alvord pullover. So this 
is a bit small on me so I can't wait but I really love the look of it so this was knit in the yarn depot it's a wool it's a wool and cotton blend and it's got amazing stitch definition like really amazing so the stripes are gutter and um, seed stitch so you are never bored at any moment when you're working on this so there are two options on this pattern you can either work on it with the striping or you can use a solid color so even when you look at the pattern i'll include the link below you're going to see the two samples two samples were made for this pattern and the other one is in a solid color and the this sample that i've got here is in two colors so it's a very easy relaxing knit to do and i really enjoyed working on this one and then the next thing i'll talk about is this hat it's called Luvanzi. So um, I used the pattern that I did for the Luvanzi pullover. So it's the same uh, colorway pattern. So it's worked from the bottom up and it's got a folded brim. So I need this one for my husband uh, some time back since we were in winter. And even though it's been worn a bit, it still looks very good. It doesn't really look... Uh, old and worn so on this one i used this yarn cashmere merino bloom and uh there are four colors here so there's this black I i'll put the color names below and then there's the wheat flower that's the color that i've got here and then we've got the this red i think it's okay let me not lie um, i don't remember the name and then there's this light gray so it's got four colors and it's a very easy one to work it's not that it's not really complicated the color work is very straightforward so um i'll be launching this one soon but um i'll be doing three or four other heads with the leftovers of with the leftovers that i got from the cyan and i'll use the the color work motifs that i used for the other designs i published earlier this year so i'll have this as an ebook and the patterns will also be available individually as well. And I think this will make some great patterns if you want to need gifts for Christmas. So that's the Luvanzi hat. And then the next one that I've got um, are these uh, socks. They are bright and colorful. Um, I've forgotten the names and I forgot to write them down when I was preparing the notes for this. So I'll put those down in the description box as well so these are uh, some slip stitch socks so um this was my first attempt of working my socks from the toe up so they work from the toe up and they have a an afterthought heel so i really love how bright and colorful these ones are and so if you can also look at the other socks, so these are very bold and bright colors as you can see and then here you've got some more neutral but high contrast colors so this is another option that you can do when you're working on this and then um there is another swatch that i've got here and here you've got more uh, less contrast i suppose if you can look at it that way you've got less contrast here so you can work on this in quite a number of ways you've got these and all those options aren't they so pretty so um i was really happy with the uh, tour up construction but if i really had to choose one construction uh method to stick to for life i'll go with the cuff down method um so these socks are going to be up for test knitting i think early next week i've still got to put out one or two more patterns for test knitting so i don't want to overwhelm myself with too much so i think early next week i'll have these ones tested and then um, the next thing I want to talk about, I've still got a couple of FOs here, um, are my Monday to Friday socks. So I'm working on a set of five socks called Monday to Friday. And on the se set, I'm using Cocon Fingering Weight Merino. And the colors are Ice, there's Cork, Night, and a mini skein in the color Gold. So I'm working on five pairs of socks working on using those colors so i'm so excited about this project so i got this idea when i was on pinterest and i i don't remember what i was looking for at the time 
but I, I just saw these socks that these five pairs of socks so when I saw that picture I clicked on it and I saw quite a number of similar images as well so these were um, machine made socks that you can buy at the shops of course and I realized that you know what you always get these sets of socks that are worked in maybe two or three colors and each pair uses different uh, colors you can have one solid you can have the other one striped with one or the other color so that's why I decided to work on that set um, so the, I, I've done I've finished two pairs and I'm working on the third right now so the first one uh, that we have here are the motel socks so these are a solid color uh, pair worked from the cuff down with the heel flap and gusset and this beautiful Japanese cable and lace pattern so these ones are currently being tested and some testers have finished i think so all the patterns are going to come out at the same time mid-november or towards the end and there's going to be an ebook and the socks are also going to be available as individual patterns just because or oh, just in case someone is interested in one pair or two and not the entire uh, collection so these are coming out next month and then the second pair is done, and this one is a simple chevron pattern. So these are called Specifair. Um, I made the test call for these ones uh, the day before yesterday, and I'll be sending out the pattern as soon as I'm done recording this video. So these are uh, called Specifair. So the name Specifair means beautiful gift. So I worked on those ones from the uh, toe up. And they've got a short row heel and they are very well quick very quick to knit and oh by the way i forgot to mention this i used 2.5 uh no 2.25 millimeters on these ones and for these ones um on the uh, leg and on the foot i used um three millimeters because of the color pattern and then on the cuff i used 2.25 millimeter needles and then the third pair that I, I, i'm working on are the days the socks so i'm done with the first sock but i'm still working on the second one so i'm so excited about this one as well so these are worked from the cuff down with these daisies on them i really love them i mean everyone at home loves this pair and then on this ones i uh played around with the shadow wrap heel it was fun to knit i thought it was going to be very difficult but it isn't i mean if you can work a short row heel you can definitely work this one so um that this is the third pair so i'm working on uh, okay this is the one that i'm working on. i'm only like here so i haven't done much on this one so these are the yarns the gold is the um is the mini skein i was talking about earlier so i'm only using it for the flowers here and then nightmare is a very dark brown so it's not nightmare it's night night is a very dark brown and then ice is an off-white and then uh the color coke is this one so um the next pair that i'll do is going to be a slip stitch pair and um, it's going to have an afterthought heel because i'm trying to play around with different heels and just make this set interesting so i'll be using these two colors for the for the fourth pair and the final one is going to use uh the three main colors is going to have ice cork and night it's going to be a striped pair it's going to be a very simple one i think it's going to be the simplest in the collection and i'm still deciding on the heel uh, that i'll use for that one so i'll see as i start working on it so um that's the monday to friday sock set and then my other works in progress i've got this one this i'm so excited about this one so this is my orchid adventure wrap so um as you can see it's got these beautiful colors so so far I'll, i've done one two three four five six seven repeats of the pattern so um with this one i'm using uh, miss lamotian's secret society advent set from 2020 i think it was called um okay delirium because she was motivated by orchids for the color scheme it's very beautiful um so i'm going to do 12 repeats of this pattern so 
what I wanted to achieve with this design was um, using as much of my yarn as possible. So this is what I have left. So even on the last repeat where I have to do a bind off, I'll still have enough. So this wrap is worked sideways. It's huge as you can see. So what that means is the number of stitches that I've cast on are going to determine the length of the wrap. So when I'm wearing it, it's going to be like this. So the number of stitches uh, determine the length of the wrap and the width is going to be determined by the number of uh, rows or pattern repeats that I work. So on this particular one, since I've got 12 mini skeins, it's going to be 12 repeats of the pattern. So um, this one is quite long. I think it's going to be over 60 inches long. And um, I'll see the final size that I'll get from this. So when I'm writing the pattern, I'm going to do, uh, this is uh, fingering weight yarn. So I'm going to write the pattern for DK and worsted weight as well. So that um, even if you want to work with a different weight, you can do it. So this pattern is not limited to people that have got these advent sets. Uh, so even if you want to use your leftover yarns, it's a great stash bursting project. Or if you want to use maybe two or three colors, for instance, let's say if you want to use three colors, you can just work with color one, two, three, one, two, three, right up to the end. Or you want to work with four colors. So it's there's a lot that you can do. Even if you want just two colors, you can actually alternate the two colors. They, um, there are no limits to it really. It's not necessarily just for advent sets. So I'm excited about this. It's an easy, relaxing knit, and I'm really loving it. And then the next one is currently kind of hibernating. So this is going to be called this Persifle hat, which is, uh, remember I said the name is it means it's a beautiful gift. So I'm using this uh, pink color. This is African Expressions Joy, and I'm going to be using an off-white and a light gray for the body of the hat. And I'll be using this pattern that I've got for the socks. So um, I've been putting this on hold for a while because I wanted to get the socks done and tested. So I haven't worked on this in the past week and a half. And then uh, my last work in progress is the laundry way pullover. So this is the pullover that I'm talking about. I've shared a couple of photos on Instagram. So this is a turtleneck pullover. And the increases are done in the gutter, um, not gutter, sorry, in the, on the pearl stitches. And then there's some um, uh, Japanese cable and lace pattern on the body. So um, I would have been very far with this project, but I made a mistake on the cables when I was uh, starting out. So I had to frog the entire section. I had done one repeat of the pattern. So I had to frog the entire section and start afresh. So it's taken me back a little bit. I would probably maybe be somewhere here. Because with this one, I don't want to make it too long. I just want to make it long enough to wear with, uh, so, so that I can be able to wear it with skirts or dresses as well, and not just pants. So um, that's the Londiwe. So the name Londiwe means sheltered and protected. And when you look at the coziness of this yarn and the tail neck, I thought the name was very fitting for the design. So this was a bit of a challenge for me to write. I remember it took about two or three days for me to um, do the math for the yoke. Because when you look at this, um, unlike other yoke, circular yoke patterns that I've done in the past, um, with this one, I had to cast on a different number of stitches for each size because the increases are going to be this, are going to be the same number every time I do an increase. So for instance, if they are maybe, um, let's say there are 30 pearl sections, so, so that means every time I do an increase, I'll be increasing 30 stitches. So I didn't want to end up with uh, a funnel or some other funny shape. So I had to really uh, think through the shaping so that uh, this flares out beautifully and it fits and sits very well on the body. So that was, a, that was the challenge that I had to work with. So each size starts with a different stitch count. And like uh, a regular circular yoke top where two or three sizes can have the same number of stitches when you're starting out. And 
you increase at different rates. So the shaping changes from there. But with this one, I need to start with different stitch counts. Otherwise, the numbers will still be the same going down because every time I do an increase, the number of stitches that I increase are consistently the same throughout. So um, I'm working on this using this yarn from Paul Soho. I mentioned it earlier. It's um, cashmere merino bloom, and the color is with flower. So um, these are all my works in progress. I'm kind of getting a bit more disciplined because I've only got four works in progress at the moment. And then um, the other thing that I wanted to share are the future projects that I'll be working on. So the next one that I'll be casting on as soon as I'm done with the socks is the, it's, um, it's going to be a coat and I'm planning to work on it from the top down. And this yarn is a cocoon iron weight and it's a hundred percent merino and the color is dune okay it's right there so i'll it's going to have some cables and some twisted stitches so it's going to be a really um interesting pattern on the cape on the coat so i'm still figuring a couple of details that i'll be adding or subtracting but that's what i'll be working on next and then i'll also be doing another coat which will have uh, different cable patterns as well and this one is going to be using pearl soho plenty it's so nice and squishy this is also a worsted weight yarn and the color that i'll be using here is uh, ash gray so there's the color name ash gray so that's the next quote that i'll be doing and then um the other project that i'll be casting on later on this year is going to use this yarn bare naked wools and um, the color is white chocolate. So this is confection worsted. Um, I'll be working on some slippers, some squishy warm slippers. So I'll probably work on this one later, maybe in December, because once I'm done with this set of socks, I'm going to take a break from socks. I mean, I'm going to take a break so from socks. I've been working on socks so much. I'm kind of getting tired of socks, but anyway, um, I'll take a break from them for a while and then I'll work on this. So those are my upcoming projects. Um, I'm so excited about them and I like the fact that I'll be using some much thicker yarn. So with the coats, I had hoped that I'll finish them earlier and put them out towards the end of the year, but most likely they'll be coming in January. I'll try to get them done and tested as soon as possible. And then the next thing um, that I want to talk about was to invite you to sign up for my newsletter. I'll include that link in the description box below. Um, as you have all noticed, it's very difficult to reach people through social media nowadays with the algorithms. I don't know what's happening there, but anyway, it's making it so difficult to reach people. But with the newsletter, it's much easier to get through to the people that are um, supporting my work. So um, what I normally do with my newsletter, I only put it out when there's a new launch or a special announcement. So you're not going to be getting a lot of mail coming through and spamming your inbox. Um, so the one advantage that you get with the newsletter is that um, with every single launch that I do, you get double the discount that is available for everyone. So with socks, I normally do a much smaller discount because they cost much less. So uh, newsletters, newsletter subscribers get double what the um, regular users of my patterns get. So with garments and other things, you can get between 30 and 40 percent off when a new garment is when a new pattern is launched. So please sign up, and I also do some special announcements there and share some exclusive content that won't be shared with everybody else and stuff that i may be working on that i'm not sharing out there so i'll include that link below so you can sign up on that one and then i'll also be working on a couple of videos and uh, more of a presentation style i'll see how i can put those across and because um i've been thinking of ways to include some educational stuff in my channel so that someone can actually watch and learn something and figure out something. Because I think every single knitter at some point is a designer of their own work. There are times when you come up with an idea and you want to execute it yourself. So I'll be looking at different aspects. Um, so the next uh, set of designs that I'll, 
set of videos that I'll be doing are going to be talking about reps. So different types of reps and how they are constructed. So that even if you have an idea or you have a stitch pattern that you want to use, you can easily apply it to a different construction method and come up with your own rep. So this is mainly done to empower knitters to get to design their own uh, projects. So I'm so excited about that. So I'll probably be recording those ones on the next session that I do my recordings. Ideally, I'd love to put out two videos a week. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that because in order for me to sit down and record, my husband has to be here. He has to be looking after our daughter. So there's a lot that has to be put in place for me to be able to sit down and record. So we'll see how we can work around that and start doing some videos. I'll also be doing a series called My Design Process where I'll be focusing on individual designs that I've done in the past and talking you through how I came up with the design so that um, I think it's, it's a very good thing to understand where certain elements in a design come from because I've noticed that sometimes when someone is looking at uh, your work or your design they're like oh why did you do this bottom up or why is it done top down I love bottom up or I love top down construction or oh, they've liked sleeves like this or like that or a crew neck or a v-neck so I'll be talking you through uh, my design process and I think that helps anyone who's working on your project to understand where all the elements that make up that particular garment or accessory come from so i'm so excited about those ones as well so probably the next video that i'll be posting might be um about one of my designs that i've done in the past so that's all that i have for today thank you so much for joining me and for watching all the way to the end Please don't forget to subscribe because there will be more content coming up. Thank you. Bye-bye.